all right guys welcome back to my channel let me show you another trick again watch the seven of hearts and i do a little wave it becomes the ace of spades one magic a day keeps your worries away hi my name is galen and in this channel i like to share some of my copywriting and marketing tips with all my audience so let's say if you are new to my channel please remember to click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so that you can receive whenever I post a new video. So in this video, I'm going to share with you uh, one of the most common marketing channels that everybody uses, which is email. Have you ever wondered when you send out the emails to your prospects and you waited for a couple of days and you're not receiving any response at all? You see, your prospects are receiving hundreds of emails every single day. So let's say if your email is not intrigued enough to capture their attention, you will end up in their trash bin or your email will not be get open at all. So that's why in this video, I'm going to share with you the five elements in an email that you need to know and understand how it works so that you can next time when you send out an email, you can get at least some response. So let's deep dive into the five elements right now. Alright, so when you are writing an email, uh, think of it as a process in a factory assembly line with different elements in place. And each element has one job to fulfill, which is to keep the assembly line moving. So in the email, there are five critical elements that can able to help you to increase your open rate, your click-through rate. And the first element that is most critical is your email subject line. Why this is so important? Because this is the first thing that your prospect will see. You cannot have an email subject line that is very boring, very corporate, or even very spammy. How do you make sure that you can increase your open rate in your email? There are a few things I can suggest is uh, you can have an email subject line that can generate curiosity. You can put in a question in your email subject line. And the last most important thing that you need to know is to you need to personalize your email. Okay, you think of it like you're writing to a friend like that. Let's say if you know your prospect name, right? put your prospect name in your email subject line so that when they receive uh, your email, right, they will feel more personalized and open up your email. For example, let's say if your prospect name is John, you can say, hey John, you might like to look at this, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so let's say if I'm John, I, I receive your email, at least I feel very personal. I want to take a look what's inside the email content. Okay, so that's why I say it is important to take note of your email subject line in order to have a success open rate. Okay, after your prospect has opened up your email, right, the next thing they are going to look at is your first sentence or your first paragraph in your email content, which I call it the hook. This is the second element which is very important uh, because uh, the job of the hook, right, is to keep your readers interested to read paragraph by paragraph and eventually your whole email content. And what I can suggest is to make your hook intrigued enough for them to keep on reading is you can put in a fact okay, in your first paragraph or you can even put in a myth that they might not be aware of or a book statement you know, that keep them interested to find out more or even the best is the story. Okay, so all these uh, ideas, right, you can put inside as a hook to allow them to keep on reading and find out more what's happening in the email content as well. Okay, the third important element in the email that I want to talk about is your body copy. Well, the role of the body copy is to allow your readers to feel the desire of your product offerings. Okay, why is this so critical? Let's say, for example, you think of a reader point of view. He's reading your content and he wants to find out what's in it for him or her. Okay. And how does your product or solution can help them to solve their problems that they're currently facing? So that's why by putting more emphasis on your body content, uh, you can connect more with the readers 
for example, you can put in more benefits rather than your product features in your body content. And this triggers an emotional connection with them uh, to make them feel that, let's say, if I want to engage your service or buy your products, uh, how does it help them to transform themselves to be better? Or how does it benefit them to achieve who they want to be? Okay, so that's why you really, really need to emphasize of putting good benefits, okay, rather than talking about how good your company is or how powerful your product features are. One of the most common mistakes that businesses make in their email content is they forget to put in this fourth element in the email, which is the call to action. Why is it so important to put in this call to action in your email content? It is because it is the job function of the call to action is to guide the readers what to proceed next after reading the whole description of your product offer. Okay, and I see many businesses often make the, this mistake, uh, not putting a call to action, or maybe they put in too many call to action that will confuse the readers. Okay, so that's why my suggestion, if you want to put in the call to action in an email, make sure to only put one call to action so that they will know what to do next after reading your whole description of your product offer. Have you ever received any emails from companies and you saw this little short form called p.s in the email content? Well, you may not know what is it about, but it's actually a short form of a name called postscript, which is the last element in the email. And the job role of the postscript is to really treat the call to action or to create the fear of missing out for your readers. And you may be wondering, why is it important to put a postscript at the end of the email? It is because it triggers the emotions and influence your readers to quickly take an action due to urgency. Let's say, for example, they read through your whole body content and they understand what you're offering, but they may have some question or doubts themselves or whether your product or solution is suitable for them. By having this postscript at the end of the email, it helps to trigger an emotion to reinforce the message why they should buy your offer. Okay, let's say if they don't buy your offer, what will happen to them? Will they proceed on with their daily life or they can become uh, better by transforming themselves? So by having this postscript, right, is actually the one of the most effective strategies that marketers use to even persuade their uh, readers to take an action immediately. All right, so I hope this video can benefit you to have a better understanding how these five elements in the email can lead you to have a successful email strategy. So let's say if you really like this video, please remember to subscribe and comment below so that I can know what type of topics you are interested in and I can make more of that to benefit you. Always remember, you are just one email strategy away from your business success and I'll see you in my next video.